Okay, so just imagine getting home from a holiday and opening your phone bill to discover that you now owe almost 11,000 pounds. Here is Michael Matheson, a loyal and long-time SNP government minister who racked up an 11,000 pound data roaming bill on a family holiday to Morocco. His defense at the time was that he was doing compelling constituency work and that he was unaware that he needed to change his SIM card. If only he'd been aware of eSIMs and in particular one provider called Olafly. Their plans are unlimited, affordable and available worldwide, including Morocco, and at an average cost of just £27 for 10 days, they're significantly cheaper than most traditional carriers. So we're going to put Olafly to the test. I'll not only show you how to purchase and activate one of their eSIMs, but also find out what speeds we can get and if they're truly unlimited. Not every phone can use an eSIM, so it's important to first check. Most newer models are compatible, and that includes an iPhone XR or Google Pixel 3. Manito also has this handy list that's frequently updated, which I've linked in the description box below. But even if your phone can use eSIMs, it also needs to be unlocked. You can check this yourself by visiting your settings, clicking General, about and then scrolling down to network provider or carrier lock if like this it says no sim restrictions then your phone is unlocked if it says something else unfortunately it might be locked but don't panic try contacting your network or carrier to see if they can unlock your phone Olafly is available in over 160 countries and it's actually easier just to show you the places that they're not available. Besides the Bahamas, this list is mostly made up of non-traditional tourist destinations, so unless you're planning on taking your summer vacation in North Korea, you should be covered. Now, unlike traditional network providers or carriers, Olafly's pricing is very transparent, so you don't have to worry about any unexpected charges. Their pricing is based on the amount of days you need the eSIM. This usually begins at five and goes all the way up to 90. Although with some destinations like Turkey, you are required to specify the number of days you need. On average, 10 days of unlimited data will cost around $27.50. And trust me, as someone that's reviewed and used a lot of eSIM providers, this is great value for money. And if you want to get one for even cheaper, right now you can get 5% off with the code MONITO. I've put all the details, including that code, in the description box below. There's also an affiliate link, so if you'd like to support myself and the channel, please consider using it. You can either purchase your eSIM via Olafly's website or through their app. It doesn't really matter which one you choose, except it might be better to use a desktop if you want to activate and start using it immediately. That's because you'll have the option to set it up using a QR code, which is a lot easier to scan when it's visible on another device. On the other hand, if you don't have a desktop, that's totally okay, and their app is also convenient for purchasing because they have Apple Pay. But for the sake of this video, I'll use their website. So either click the link in the description box or visit olafly.com. And once you're there, click this button and check the language and currency is set correctly. Because I'm in the UK, I'll set this to GBP. Once that's done, we need to enter our travel destination. If you plan on visiting multiple locations, then you'll want to enter a region such as North America or Europe. Interestingly, the cost of a Europe eSIM is the same as a single destination such as France, Ireland, or Spain. Now, I don't know why this is. You'd think it would be cheaper just to buy one destination, but this could be worth paying attention to, especially if you aren't 100% on your travel itinerary. Like if you're going to potentially visit multiple countries, then just get yourself a regional one, even if your mind isn't made up. But do check first to see if the prices are the same, because in Asia, the cost of a regional one is more expensive than destinations like Japan. I'm just going to select France as my destination. And before we choose the amount of days we want our eSIM for, I just want to show you the technical specs as this contains some important information. This particular eSIM comes with an Austrian number. You can't use it to text, but it does allow you to make incoming and outgoing phone calls. You also get up to 60 minutes for free. If you look closely, there are some countries that you can't make or receive calls from. So double check this if it's something you plan on using. Here we can also see the speeds we'll be receiving, the networks, and that tethering or hotspot is unavailable. Unfortunately, that is the case with a lot of Olafly's eSIMs. Also, while we're here, I just want to point out this speed reduction section. Although their eSIMs are unlimited, you may have your speeds throttled if you use a lot of data. This is known as a fair usage policy. 
I've spoken to Olafly about this and they said it's at the discretion of the network provider. So there's no way of knowing exactly how much data you have to use for this to happen. Well, we'll be testing exactly this at the end of the video to see if we can throttle one of their eSIMs. Now we just need to select the duration we want the eSIM for and the number of travelers. This is basically just a quantity question. And if you select two, then the cost will double and so on. If you use the affiliate link, at this point, the discount code should have been applied. And once that's purchased, you'll receive an email confirmation. That's going to contain important installation information. And if it applies to your eSIM, it'll also have your designated phone number. If you have WhatsApp, you'll even receive a message like this one. It has the same information as the email, except with loads of emojis. Also, just because we've now purchased our eSIM, it doesn't mean our plan has started. For that to happen, we'll need to install, activate and turn on data roaming. Installing and activating an Olafly eSIM. Now, before we begin the install, there's a few important things to remember. Firstly, make sure you have a stable internet connection. The process is going to take a few minutes and if your internet drops out, then the installation may fail. You can also only scan the QR code once. So if you choose this option, again, just make sure your internet connection is stable. Finally, don't remove the eSIM from your device until you finish using it because once you delete it, you can't use it again. To start the installation, visit your settings and click mobile service or cellular and tap add eSIM. Here we can either scan, enter manually, or if you have iOS 17, use a screenshot of the QR code. Manually will be the most time consuming, although it's still pretty straightforward, but you'll have to go back and forth copying and pasting information. Let's just go ahead and scan the QR code, as for me, that's the most convenient option. Once that's scanned, you just need to tap continue. At this point, it should say activating and eventually connecting to network. Now this might take a while, so just leave your phone alone, don't close this window, and it should take roughly one to two minutes. Once that's finished, it'll say mobile plan setup complete and you can just tap done. Now here we can see our primary SIM. That's the one we usually use and also our new Olafly SIM that's currently labeled travel. Firstly, let's rename this. So tap on travel and then custom label and set it to something that's easy to identify. I'll just call it Olafly hyphen France and then tap done. Next, we want to hit continue and then select our default line. If you want to keep using your normal number to receive calls and texts, then select primary. I always choose to keep my primary SIM as the default line in case of emergencies or if I need to use two-factor authentication. Doing this won't stop you from being able to use the Olafly eSIM to make or receive phone calls and depending on your phone and operating system, you may be able to assign a SIM for a specific contact. For example, on my iPhone, I can add a contact and then choose to use the Olafly eSIM. I can also do this before I make an outgoing call by tapping this button and selecting Olafly. Once we've selected our default line, we tap continue and now we have the option to keep receiving iMessages and FaceTime calls to our normal number. Here I recommend selecting primary. There's really no point turning this off because your phone will use data from Olafly's eSIM. Tap continue. And finally, we just need to select mobile data. This just depends on whether you want to activate your eSIM now or later. If we select Olafly and the eSIM connects to a network and uses data, then your plan will begin. If you want to wait and you keep this as your primary SIM, that's also okay as you can easily change it later in settings. I'll also show you how to do that shortly. But for now, because I want to activate immediately, I'm going to select Olafly. This is also quite important. Make sure allow mobile data switching is toggled off. If this is on and at any point you have a weak signal, then your phone may attempt to revert back to using data through your primary SIM. Finally, just tap done and the eSIM will be installed. Now let's imagine we're ready to start using our eSIM and we want to activate it. Go to settings, and if you originally chose not to select Olafly as your mobile or cellular data provider, then you first need to tap mobile data at the top and select Olafly. Again, just make sure allow mobile data switching is toggled off. We now want to go back and select our primary SIM because we're going to first toggle data roaming to off. That way we have peace of mind that our regular SIM won't be using any data. And if you want even more assurance and you don't need to receive texts or calls, then you could toggle turn on this line to off. That will disable the SIM entirely. So if anyone calls you on that number, 
they'll go straight to voicemail. Once that's done, we go back and tap on our Olafly eSIM. Make sure turn on this line is toggled on and then toggle data roaming to on. That will activate the eSIM and your phone will begin to use it for data. You could also check data mode. Here you can choose between these three and because we have unlimited data, we definitely don't need low data mode. And in fact, we may as well just select allow more data on 5G and really get our money's worth. Finally, check network selection is toggled to automatic. If it isn't, this will show you a list of network providers that are available, but you're better off just letting your phone choose the best one. So I bought an unlimited UK eSIM for four days and began by testing the speeds. I chose places where people typically use or need their phones, such as a field, a housing development, at home and on the loo. Now in this room, I usually get 5G, but when I walk around my house, it can vary. So that's exactly what I did. And I discovered that it didn't matter where I was or whether my phone was connected to three, four or 5G. The download speed was typically around seven megabytes per second. So this led me to believe that this particular eSIM may be capped at that speed. What's also interesting is that with O2, my normal carrier, and in this very room, I get with 5G, 45 to 50 megabytes of download speed. But I also appreciate that carriers have different areas of coverage. So with that in mind, I drove to the nearest place where EE claims to have great 5G. Okay, so I live here where there's apparently no 5G and I've traveled to here where apparently the coverage is fantastic. I don't have 5G. Now bear in mind that the map I just showed you belongs to EE, the carrier or network that are apparently responsible for this eSIM. It's all very strange. Ultimately, I drove here to test 5G in an area where I thought it'd be strong to see if there were any differences. Unfortunately, I can't do that. While that was a bit of a failure, I did manage to test the eSIM while navigating and listening to an audiobook that I hadn't already downloaded and it worked perfectly fine. Now it was the next day when things really started to get interesting. I began by downloading my favorite film Film, Zodiac. It's two hours and 40 minutes long. I chose the best quality and it took around 17 and a half minutes, which I thought was pretty good. So I did another test and that's when I discovered that my speed had halved to three megabytes per second. Could the throttling have already begun? Well, to find out, I downloaded my second favorite film. This movie is shorter than Zodiac, so in theory, a smaller file size and therefore should download faster. Well, after 18 minutes and only 36%, my camera ran out of memory. And with that, I paused the download and ran another speed test. I had been throttled. You could argue that I deserved it. Downloading high quality feature length films over data is somewhat irresponsible, but I never expected it to be that soon. At this point in the day, I'd reached around four and a half gigabytes of usage, which I didn't think was that extreme, but that's what it took for EE to throttle me. At least until 11.30 that evening, when my speeds did return to a predictable seven megabytes per second. From there on, I was far more sensible. I used it to listen to music, browse the web, use WhatsApp, and when I did stream video, it was always at 720p. And I think if you're sensible, so don't download films at the highest quality, save that for Wi-Fi, then you should be absolutely fine. But unfortunately, I can't be certain because this will depend on the eSIM you buy and the carrier. And it's this uncertainty that is arguably a downside to Olafly. And I do think there needs to be greater transparency on how much you can use before being throttled. But if you are someone that wants a lot of data at an affordable price with peace of mind that you won't run out and the convenience of an eSIM, then they are a compelling choice. I also found their customer service to be very responsive. In fact, I recently reviewed 16 different providers and Olafly came out on top. On average, someone would get back to me within just one minute. You can watch that video by clicking here. And if you are watching this and you've already used Olafly, then please feel free to share your personal experience in the comments below. I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.